Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today. We have Dr. Selvi Regasami, and she is a wonderful, amazing guest. I'm so excited to have her on the show, and you're going to get a lot out of her. But before we begin, I just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors, and they are DMA World. They are a marketing consultant agency, and they help small businesses become big businesses. And they don't want you to get scammed by those large marketing companies. So visit dmaworld.com, where they want to speak to you. The owner is Mark, and he'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. So, Dr. Selby, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Hi, Stacey. Uh, really nice to meet you and great to be on the show. Um, so, to understand me, I think I need to back up a little bit into um, my healing journey. So, currently, I am a gut health coach, but how I got there was through going through my personal journey with Crohn's disease, which is an autoimmune disease of the digestive system. Right. Um, and I kept hitting walls and I kept struggling and I was going through medication after medication, surgery after surgery, still unable to get to any semblance of not even just health, but any semblance of control yeah. over what was happening with my gut, with my body, um, just really felt out of control. And I was in this cycle of just over and over and over of an, of taking another medication and that would fail needing a surgery, which led to another surgery, which led to another surgery. Yeah. And I kind of resigned myself to it, you know, hoping that maybe somehow, some way I would get to remission Yeah. until I was back in the hospital, back on the operating table. And anyone who's ever been in an operating room, you know, how nasty those lights are. Like I still remember laying on that metal table, looking up at the lights going, this is cannot be my life. Yeah. This is not living. This is ridiculous. Yeah, I hear you. And, you know, looking back, I made a vow in the moment, which I don't think I realized. But, you know, that was a moment where I was like, I will do anything, anything to get better, whatever it takes. So went through the surgery, got back home. As I was recovering, um, I love to cook. And I actually had a cooking blog at that point in time. So I would follow other people's cooking blogs. Yeah, yeah. What are they up to? What are they cooking? Whatever. So I go to this one cooking blog and they're posting an update about their cat. Actually, their cat was struggling with arthritis, uh, but joint pain, right? Inflammation, right. all of these kinds of things and how they started to modify the cat's diet because what the cat was eating was out of alignment, was not what was meant for a cat to eat right so they talked to their vet they switched the cat's diet all of a sudden the joint pain started to get better this and this um and the cat is able to be more mobile all of this kind of stuff now they're like they're, they don't like bulb clicks off for them they're athletes they're like wait a minute maybe if we switched up our diet yeah our performance would be better etc so they did and so i'm voraciously reading this and something clicks inside of me and i'm like wait a minute Maybe if I had changed my diet, that would help somewhat because I was struggling with joint pain and fatigue and bloating and, you know, just all the things. Like I remember my stomach would feel like a drum. Yeah. <laughs> I used mm -hmm. to play it like a bongo drum because it was uh -huh. so bloated. And um, so anyway, so I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll try making a dietary change. And all this time I'd pick my diet, my doctor's brains. Yeah. Um, does diet play a role? Well, no, not really, you know. Um, yeah, I know. Looking back, I was like, wow, that's, and I still hear this from clients who are like, oh, my doctor told me diet doesn't play a role. I'm like, hold yeah. on while I go bang my head against the wall. <laughs> 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 so I started basic. I eliminated gluten and, yes. you know, now it's like everywhere. But at that point in time, it felt like a big deal to me. Yeah. And I started to feel better. The bloating started to decrease. All of a sudden I had a little more energy, mm -hmm. um, you know, it just, I started to feel more, more like me. I was like, wait a minute, yeah. huh, I think I'm onto something. Right. So that started to spur more changes. And I started to play around with diet and, you know, what else can I do in that realm? Right. Long story short, eventually that led me to acupuncture to the world of Eastern medicine. Right. And that was where I really started to find answers, right. Where I started to 
to look at the body as a whole. So I'm a trained Western medicine doctor, but yeah. I really feel like, you know, so much of what I had learned was in discrete systems, mm -hmm. the circulatory system and the nervous system and the digestive system. And, you know, you have a patient in the hospital and you're calling on all of these different specialists. All of a sudden I go to my acupuncturist. She takes my pulse and she's asking me, are you angry today? And I was like, what are you talking about? I know 74 beats per minute. How the heck are you able to see that I'm angry or frustrated <laughs> by my pulse? Yeah. And um, she started to educate me and I just learned and learned and learned about, you know, the role of emotions in the body and the role of mindset and the role of different foods and different seasons and how all of that was playing into my health. And I yeah. started to understand what health really meant. Right. Like, and so that's when all the pieces kind of started to fall into place. And I started to understand that there's much more than just the physical body at play. Yeah. You, you know, like so many people don't realize how much what we put in our body plays such a toll on how we feel, how it affects our, our mind, the way we mm -hmm. think, our clarity, our focus, you know, our overall health, fatigue, bloatedness, inflammation, like we mentioned, mm -hmm. all these things are in play by what we put in our bodies. And even so you go outside in the environment, as soon as you go outside and you take your first breath, there's toxins in the air. We just don't see them. So yes. we're always, our bodies are always, you know, in, inhibiting, you know, toxins and, you know, it's our job, you know, to be able to care for our body the right way. And, you know, it's really important. You know, you mentioned gut health, you know, it, it's, if you are, if your gut is not balanced, it, it can affect your entire body and everything about it. And, you know, people don't realize how important it really is. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's, there's a saying, um, in Eastern medicine, um, Indian medicine, Chinese medicine, right. That gut health is the foundation of all health. And yeah. it's true. It it's is true. absolutely true. It doesn't matter what your diagnosis is if you have chronic illness if you have autoimmune disease yeah you need whether you're feeling symptoms or not you right. do need to take a look at your gut health because that is a game changer for everything yes yeah i know for me you know just like you were mentioning earlier to me you know once i started to balance my my gut and i started to balance the bad bacteria with the good bacteria bacteria, I noticed a humongous change in my overall health, even with my with the chronic illnesses that I, I was dealing with, mm -hmm. they improved. And, you know, yeah. it, you know, it, it's just pe people don't realize, I don't know how you feel about it. But like, you know, in, in, in my eyes, I feel, you know, if we if we put the, the food that today in the United States, there's so many preservatives and so many bad things in the food is that when it comes into our body, our body doesn't know what to do with it because it, it's 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 abnormal. It, it doesn't know what to do with it. So it stores it. And then you have this buildup of toxins in your body and then it's slowing down all your organs. It, you're mm -hmm. feeling sluggish and then you're you're you know you have like the fogginess in your brain and then the inflammation occurs and your body just goes out of whack you know how do you feel about you know our food industry and and how you know how important food is it, you know how it plays a role in our health absolutely i mean how i say it is this right because um my work, I work from kind of the inside out and the outside in, if you will. So starting from the physical, going all the way out to the energy level yeah, um, and vice versa. And the thing is that food is so important and it forms the foundation. You know, as you said, it's if you're eating things, not necessarily even just fast food, right? right. But even things that come in a box that are already prepared, right? Things that might just be convenient. Yeah. Um, and your body can't identify it as food because you know, when you have a long list of ingredients and you're struggling to pronounce them, trust yeah. me, your body cannot recognize that as food, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Yeah. And I remember, I think it was Cameron Diaz. I saw her being interviewed on a show once. And um, she said, basically, just, just because you can chew something, swallow it and poop it out doesn't mean that you should eat it. Yeah. It just means True. that you can chew it, swallow and poop it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just because that's happening doesn't mean that your body's happy or yeah. is in a state of balance, right? Right. Um, and as you said, your energy, your mood, your 
Um, if you felt fogginess in your brain, which I had for years and years and didn't realize it, I thought it was normal yeah. until it lifted. And I was like, oh my gosh, it can be like this. What? Right. Um, the food is a game changer. It's a make or break, right? So yeah. when you're eating the right foods, that might not be enough to get you where you want to be, but without it, you're never going to make forward momentum. Yeah. So, yeah. And I've seen people too with the best of intentions um, who are trying to eat clean, who are still struggling. And that's, you know, that's also multifactorial, just the soil conditions today, right? How many nutrients are actually in our food, even if you're buying high quality, you know, all of those kinds of things. The fact is that our food supply is so different than it was two generations, three generations, you know, what our great grandmothers ate yeah. was much more nutrient dense than what we have right now. Oh yeah. Um, but, you know, that being said, we still need to do our best to eat as clean as we can. As you said, also addressing the toxins that are part of daily modern life, yeah. right? Um, in the air, in the water, in the soil, in like, what is your environment? Where are you working, right? All of these nuances, as you start to address every single piece that you can, right? What are you storing your food in, for example? Yeah. Um, each of those micro shifts, if you will, starts to shift your health and starts to shift your body back yeah. to a place of balance, which is where it wants to be. Exactly. Exactly. You know, I, I think, you know, people have to really understand, you know, when you look at today, we have so many increases in diabetes. We have ADHD. Mm -hmm. We have people with, you know, uh, an extensive amount of heart problems in the United States, you know, more than ever before. Absolutely. Obesity is looked at, you know, as the norm. You know, people don't realize, you know, um, they're, you know, they're saying that, you know, to be overweight is is fine. It's, you know, your body is beautiful, but yet you know, when you're obese and you have extra weight on you, you know, you open yourself up to illnesses, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, people really have to take into account what they put in their bodies and, you know, and what could happen if, if we don't really, you know, start to take care of ourselves the proper way. Do you have any suggestions for people? Like, what are your thoughts about all this? Absolutely. I mean, yeah. You know, it's interesting because I feel like sometimes there can be a place like where the motivation almost becomes fear, right? Yeah. Of, um, I'm so afraid that this or that is going to happen. And I just want to make sure to iterate that the lens is actually, this is me taking responsibility for my health, for my yeah. body, for my existence, right? right. Um, and that being the energy from which you're making choices. So for me, I was like, you know, when I finally started to realize that food played a role and that I could do actually a lot at home mm -hmm. and, you know, what I was putting into my mouth was becoming my home pharmacy, if you will. Yeah, right. That was super empowering because I was like, oh, wow. Okay. Now I can actually make choices and those choices can help my body. This is amazing. Right. So, yeah. um, and I couldn't eat a vegetable for years because I was so inflamed and my doctors had pretty much scared me. Right. So all that to say, you know, it's, it's easy to say, eat fresh fruit and fresh vegetables and, you know, things like that. But if you're someone who is struggling with diarrhea, for example, it's not going to work. The raw foods are going to just aggravate what's already inflamed yeah. uh, and giving you a problem. Right. So if you're in that place, I would say start simple, right. really simple, right? Um, look at what you're eating right now. And what is one step that you can take that is going to be better, right? So if you're eating a lot of um, packaged things um, and things like that and convenience foods, right? Mm -hmm. Is there a way that you can start to cook something for yourself? Maybe even a couple days a week, right? right. Make mm -hmm. some leftovers, you know? Um, that kind of thing, because your body is going to react to it differently. It's going to understand it differently. Yeah. And your body is going to start to understand that, Hey, wait a minute, this person's taking care of me. Okay. It starts to respond positively, right? right. It's kind of like a toddler in that way. Yeah. You know, you're reinforcing the positive. Now your body starts to come, 
back to a place where you want it to be, right? Start to take a couple steps towards that direction. Right. Now you have positive feedback, right? So um, that's really great. I know for my clients, if they're really struggling, I tend to start them on a gut reset. So, I mean, we just take things really, really basic and simple. Um, eliminating the foods that can potentially be aggravating for yeah. the digestive system and for the body and only adding in the foods that are nourishing that can help to repair the gut lining, right? The protein sources that yeah. are the building blocks, all of that sort of stuff. Um, and that just speeds up that process, right? So now your body doesn't have to focus so much on digesting, on breaking things down, on recognizing something that it doesn't know how to recognize. Right. Instead, it can put all of that energy, all of that intention into repairing itself because gut cells actually repair and turn over very quickly, which right. is the good news. When we give them what they need, they can actually regenerate quickly and you can start feeling better in days. If, if someone came to you and they said they want to reset their gut, you know, and they were, you know, what would be some things or maybe some suggestions to the listeners, common generalized things that you would probably suggest to your patients? Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that helped me and that I still recommend quite a bit is bone broth. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes people don't have much of an appetite even, right? So if you're yeah. not hungry, that is something that you can sip. And it actually, the, the magic in it is that as the bones start to break down, they have all of these building blocks that your gut needs for those cells to repair yeah. themselves and to turn over. Um, and so you can just sip on bone broth for even, you know, a few days if that's all you can handle and you're right. actually going to be doing your gut a favor. Um, I'm a big fan of pureed foods. Mm -hmm. at least for a few days, because again, it just takes the strain off of your digestive system. Right. Limiting things like caffeine. Most people that I'm seeing are usually not big drinkers. Yeah. Um, if you are, you're probably going to want to hold off on that too, because all of these things are going to aggravate inflammation. Yeah. Um, and things like just giving yourself extra time to decompress. Right. right. So we really need to look at stress and, you know, um, modern life oftentimes is like, our minds are in this constant state where we're looking for metaphorical tigers, right? Whether yeah. it is the kids that have something going on or the work deadline or the spouse that needs something and you feel like you're constantly having to fire on all cylinders. Yeah. How can we start to decompress that? Because as we start to do that, now your body can relax and then it can start to repair, right? So it's, again, it starts with the physical, but it goes beyond that, right? What right. are what are some of the emotions that are in the way? What what are some of the things that haven't been processed that your body is holding on to? Right. And how can we start to release those so that you can transcend that and you can actually move forward? I feel like sometimes people forget that emotions play such a, a role in our health. Over 70%, I think it is, uh, of people who suffer from stress um, suffer from chronic illnesses and it, you know, stress plays such a role, you know, people don't realize, but it actually breaks down the walls of our immune system. And it's kind of like opening the doors and saying, you know, come on, everybody, you know, come on in, you know, I'm ready for you, you know, and all these illnesses start to come because it's the breakdown of the body. You know, I feel like it's very important if you see yourself having a lot of unsettling emotions or going through a lot of stress in life that mm -hmm. you try to find, you know, healthy solutions to deal with that stress because it does affect the health tremendously, I believe. How do you feel about that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and the thing is that I've found, you know, is whether you're aware of it or not, if you're struggling with any sort of chronic illness, autoimmune disease, getting sick easily, any of that kind of stuff, by definition, your body is stressed, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when we know that, then we can start to work with that and see, okay, what are the sources of stress, right? Is it yeah. physical? Is it mental? Is it emotional? Is it energetic, right? Is this going back to something that happened way back in childhood that is being held in your energy field, which is another piece of my work, mm -hmm. that is now playing a role and your body is feeling stressed because of that? Is that a component? right? Yeah. As we start to untangle all of these pieces, then your body starts to feel more and more relaxed. Right. Um, and in my opinion, that's really the pathway to health and healing is yeah. through the body. It's not external. Um, that's the only way 
that your body can really repair itself and that it'll last, right? So I've seen plenty of things where you'll feel better for a while, you know, but then you're kind of plateau. But yeah. to really get to that place where you want to be, which everyone that I've spoken to and for myself included is it's health, it's wellness, it's being able to actually live life, right? Do the things yeah. that light you up, that bring you joy um, and move out of just existing. That happens yeah. through the body and all of those layers. Right. Are there any suggestions that you could give people to get to that point of their life when they're going through that those stresses and they feel plateaued and they kind of feel stuck? and life isn't really what they anticipated and they're just going through some hard times. What are your suggestions to those people? Yeah. Um, first of all, I get it. You know, I, I, I don't know about you, but I know I was on a hamster wheel for years and years and years. Right. Yeah. So I think the first thing is acknowledging it, right. To, mm -hmm. to even have the courage to say, hold up, I'm stuck. Yeah. And this sucks. <laughs> it's true it's true it does right yeah. and anyone who tells you different it, it I'm, I would say run right because <laughs> <laughs> it's not where you want to be yeah, right for sure. um, and so I think that's the first thing talking to someone who can help you to step outside of yourself because yeah. when you're in it, when you're like really struggling with those heavy, hard emotions, yeah. you can't see barely six inches in front of you. And I know for myself, when I found that person, for me, it was my second acupuncturist who was on the spiritual path and she would start to illuminate and reflect things back that I was like, holy crow, I didn't see any of that. What, what yeah. are you talking about? Started to light things up and I was like, oh my gosh, Okay. Again, what can I start to do? What role am I playing in this? How can I start to take responsibility? How can I shift that lens right. into a more positive um, way of thinking, way of seeing things? Because perspective is so powerful. Oh, it's so it it definitely is. It definitely is. Do you have do you have some suggestions on how people could take negative situations in their life and actually turn it around and really focus on the positive things of, of life? Because I, I feel like no matter what goes on in our life, we could take every negative thing and we can pull out something positive, you know, either a learning experience, it gave us strength, something, you know, but what's your intake? Like, what do you, what do you suggest for, for people on how to not get stuck in the negative and to mm -hmm. really focus on, on the positive aspects and use it as a building block to move forward? I love that question so much. Um, so the first thing I think is just to acknowledge that our minds are wired to focus on the negative. So it's yeah. not your fault, mm -hmm. right? It's not your fault. You're not doing anything wrong. Right. Our minds are like, if everything, even if everything is like, quote unquote, okay, it's still looking for negative yeah. things, right? It's true. Um, so it's not your fault, right? Reptilian brains, that's how they function. So yeah. knowing that I think can take a little bit of the pressure off, Um Personally, I love to recommend a gratitude journal. So even when you're in the thick of it and, you know, you're just like, oh my God, my life sucks. Everything is going wrong. This and this and this. Yeah. I would challenge you to find three things every day that you're grateful for. And right. it can be, to start off with, it can be super basic. I know when I started off, I was like, well, I've got clothes to wear. I've got food to eat. I've got a bed to sleep in. Okay. Yeah. I can say thank you for those three things. Exactly. Um, and then where you were saying, you know, right with things that are negative, there's always, I really, truly in my heart of hearts believe that in any situation, in any challenge, whatever is happening, there is always a gift, yeah. sometimes multiple gifts. Right. But what is one thing that has come out of it? Let's say you're stuck and you're struggling for days, months, weeks, years. Yeah. Maybe it's the fact that you have resilience that you didn't even know you did. You had, yeah. You could have given up a long time ago. Your body could have given up a long time ago. You might not have even, you know, been here. You might have been depressed. You might have been homeless, right? It yeah. could have always been that way. So maybe it's strength. Maybe it's determination. Maybe it's perseverance, right? What is it inside of you that has been awakened or has been given to you as a result of this? Right. Maybe you have empathy because you're like, oh my gosh, I know what it's like to be in pain, to be exhausted all the time. So I just, I care. And when someone is struggling, my heart grows out to them. Yeah. What a beautiful gift, you know? So 
I'm a big believer. It's never all good and all bad. Right. Even when it seems like it might be. So yeah, to just journal around what are maybe one or two positives that came out of this experience. Oh, I love that. I, you know, and, and, and that's what I was doing to help myself. You know, I, I feel like if I didn't go through the things I went through, I wouldn't look at people the same way and I wouldn't feel the same way. You know, I think I would have been on a totally different path, totally different journal. And I think my mindset would have been completely different. And, you know, I I wouldn't have been as compassionate and caring as I am today. And I wouldn't look at people with the same set of eyes, you know? So I think in a sense, I might've gone, you know, through a lot of hard obstacles like you did, but I think in, in the end, we turned out as better people. Absolutely. And I really, truly believe that any obstacle, any challenge, anything that's happening is ultimately, in my experience, an invitation to growth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I know if I hadn't gone through everything that I went through, I would not be who I am today. And if I'm grateful for who I am today and where I am today and what I'm doing today, yeah, I choose to take both. Yeah. All of it, you know, because, yeah, like you said. I am more empathetic to people, right? I developed an ability to really understand health and healing in my own body and what that meant, which if I had just stayed on the Western medicine path, I don't believe that I would understand it in that way. Right. It's a very different system, you know? Um, And so, yeah, I mean, it's ultimately afforded me to be in this place where I can see both so I can see holistic and I can see western and I can see the limitations and understand both and piece from each right what is actually going to work for someone and that's been such a gift Mm -hmm. you know um yeah any sort of freedom any sort of like I love to travel I love to dance right and I don't know that I would have been as grateful to have those things in my life now Mm -hmm. if they had just come so easily yeah Mm -hmm. you know so, right. yeah, I think, I think it's, you know, it's funny because when you say that I've known so many doctors that have practiced Western medicine and then later on, they kind of did a turn like you did. And I even know medical doctors that incorporate holistic living with, you know, with their medical practice because they realize the potential and, and they realize how effective it is. So, you know, it's really getting acknowledged in our our society, you know, years ago, it was a taboo thing, you know, decades ago. Now people are realizing how effective it is and how it can play such a, a strong role. Because, you know, if you look back, people have been using holistic living and, and been, and been doing things for tens of thousands of years, you know, it's been here forever, you Mm -hmm. know, and even the pharmaceutical companies, when they make medications, they, they do use, you know, supplements in their medications, you know, so it's, they realize the potential also, it's not something that, you know, is just came about, it's been here for tens of thousands of years. And and people who have practiced this for tens of thousands of years, they had very long lifespans, and they were very healthy, because it, it, it is a strong way of life. And, and it does give you a very strong, strong mindset too, I think. Absolutely. I mean, ethnicity wise, I'm Indian. And so Ayurveda, the ancient Indian medical system, as you said, goes back thousands of years. And you look at the wisdom there of what to eat in different times of the year, um, how to treat yourself for, you know, different sorts of symptoms, how to detox your body, how to cleanse, how to live, right? Yeah. it's so much wisdom. And I'm just like, Oh my gosh, like they knew this thousands of years ago and like, we're finally catching up now. Right. Right. But at least we're catching up. So at least we're catching up. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Took a while, but you know, (laughs) better late than never, right? (laughs) Better late than never for sure. For sure. Now tell me a little about the services that you have, because I'm really interested to know like what you do and, and the different things that you provide for people. Yeah. So I work with people in a few different ways. Um, My main focus is gut health. Um, Mm -hmm. So digestive disorder, whether it is Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, um, irritable bowel syndrome, or autoimmune disease, and you just want to look at your gut health. um, That is my main focus. And as I said, we work on it through all of the different layers. So we kind of start in the physical body. We look at mindset type stuff. Um, Not just, you know, like I'm not the type of person or practitioner who's going to give you a bunch of affirmations right off the bat because it's not going to work. 
Yeah. Like we need to actually see what's going on underneath inside of your mind, yeah. address that, and then you will automatically start to make um, progress forward. So we look at the mind, we look at the emotions, we look at your energy field, which to me is fascinating. Like mm-hmm. I remember reading about the work of Deepak Chopra and um, yeah. Joe Dispenza mm-hmm. um, and practitioners like this and the power of the mind and what can potentially be stored in your energy field, which is much, much, much bigger than your physical body. Yeah. But it affects everything yeah. in your health and in your well being, right? So, there are um, energetic blocks. So when we look at energy in the body, it's kind of like blood flow. Blood flow should flow freely throughout your yes. body. Mm-hmm. Energy should be the same. It should flow freely throughout your body. Right. Um, it's kind of like the current. It's kind of, you know, what keeps everything going. Yeah. If it's not flowing freely, which I have yet to meet someone where it's been wide open, easy peasy, right? Yeah, we all yeah, have yeah. blocks. <laughs> of course. And when we start to address those and open up those blocks, now you not only get back physical energy, but you get back mental peace, you get yeah. emotional clarity, um, and you're able to start moving forward. So sometimes those blocks are also keeping you stuck. So yeah. um, again, going into all of these layers with my gut health clients, that's um, what really gives them deep lasting results. Because if you've been struggling for months, years with chronic illness, it's going to take a while and it's going to take some intentionality to really yeah. get you well again. A hundred percent. Yeah. And then there are people who come to me who are like, Hey, you know, um, can I do an energy work session with you? Yes, of course. So, you know, we'll work on just purely energy work. Um, women's health is another area. So, um, women who are looking to rebalance their, their womb health, their Mm -hmm. menstrual health, things like that. Um, and all of these are kind of related and slightly different. So yeah, those are kind of the main areas that I work with people in. You know, I find sometimes people are skeptical because they can't see the energy, but they have, they, don't, they don't realize that the whole world runs through energy. And if we didn't have energy, we wouldn't exist. And like you said, the blockages, you know, if, mm-hmm. if you have blockages, you, it doesn't flow properly. And then that's where problems occur. And, you know, because just because you can't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And you can tell it exists because there are certain parts of your body that aren't going to function properly, or you're not going to feel well in certain areas, or you might not think clearly, or you might have communication problems or emotional problems caused yes. by energy blockage, you know, yes. and people have to, you know, by, by being able to heal those a- areas and be able to release those blockages, the energy then flows and then people can actually, they'll feel the difference, you know, and Absolutely. they'll, they'll be able to, you know, be able to function better on a, on a, you know, on a better, you know, scale, you know, and the, be able to do things that they normally didn't, weren't able to do previously. What do you think about that? I absolutely agree with you. I'm like vigorously nodding my head over here. Like, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of a client that I was working with, um, which is a similar kind of thing. She had Crohn's disease. She um, came to me because she's like, I really don't want to have to go on medications. My doctor's saying I might have to, et cetera. Yeah. So we start working together and it becomes clear that, you know, there is blockages in her pelvis, energetic blockages in her pelvis. Yeah. We start talking about it. She's having PMS issues. She's having menstrual irregularities. Again, very common, right? Yeah. And we start diving deeper and we start going into, you know, doing an energy work session. And it turns out she was very close with her grandmother and there was unprocessed emotion, um, stuck energy in regards to her grandmother's passing that was being yeah. held in her pelvis. I swear to God, you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time I'm just like, what's happening? Um, mm-hmm. So we work with it and it starts to open up. And all of a sudden she loved to write, but she's like, I don't know why. I just, I can't seem to write. Like something's yeah. holding me back. She started writing again her period started to normalize, like her PMS started to decrease. The pain was almost non-existent after one session, just from opening up that block. Yeah. So that's what can shift potentially. And it's not always that dramatic, but people do tell me either they feel more energetic or refreshed, or sometimes if you release a lot of energy, you're going to need a nap for a little bit, but they notice that something changed 
right? Yeah. Whether it's physically, mentally, emotionally, like you said, sometimes like, you know, something is holding me back. Well, it is right. If you have a feeling that something's holding you back, it absolutely is. Right. And when we open that up, now you're able to either make the decision, do the thing, talk to the person, you know, whatever it is, make the change. Sometimes it's a massive change, right? Yeah. Uh, work or, you know, a relationship or, you know, what have you. So it opens that up for you. And then it all goes back to when you release all these repressed emotions or, you know, problems that are going on, it, you know, releases that stress, which could also help you with any type of conditions that you are previously suffering from. It could help heal you, not just mentally, but physically it could help. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why, you know, I talk to my clients about this multi-layered approach because I'm like, if we just look at the physical and we don't look at the energetic or we just look at the energetic and we don't look at the mindset piece, like, I'm doing you a disservice. We need yeah. to look at all of these because every single one of them plays a role in your physical health. And yeah. if you're out of balance, how do we ultimately bring you back into balance? It's by working at all of these layers. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah, I feel like, you know, the one of the problems in today's society that they they so freely give out medication to, you know, mask the symptoms, but a lot of doctors don't take the time to go to the root cause. And that's what's causing the problem to begin with. So it's really finding the root cause of the issue and then solving the issue. And, and, and it's not about, you know, you take a pill, you get rid of the symptom, but then you can get another symptom from that medication and the problem still exists. It's just masking it. Yeah. This, I was literally talking about this. It's just like you took the words literally out of my mouth. <laughs> I couldn't have said that better. Yes, 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 absolutely. Um, and that was part of my frustration with, you know, both as a patient and as a doctor, I was like, we're yeah. ultimately dealing in band-aids. We're treating a symptom. And I was like, intuitively I'm like this makes no sense because right. we're not understanding what's really going on and without that like how the heck are we ever going to help anyone with anything you yeah know? in that's my native what? language there's a saying that's like you know go down to the root and pull it out like once right you do that it's done right done yeah for sure I like that I like yeah. that yeah. and it's so true it's so true yeah exactly mm -hmm. now so. where can people contact you where can they get in touch with you yeah, so they can either go to my website, which is www.drselvi.com. It's D R S E L V I.com. Um, you can follow me on Instagram. Uh, my handle is at dr.selvi.coach. Um, you can email me, selvi at drselvi.com, for any questions or any concerns. Um, I am also on Facebook, it's just my first and last name. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear with, from you, connect with you. Um, yeah. Now, when people connect with you, can they have sessions over like Zoom, let's say, you know, if they live out, you know, outside of where you are, you're lo located in New York, I think you were saying, but if you're outside of New York, can people do like Zoom calls or maybe telecalls or something like that? Absolutely. In fact, the majority of my work is through Zoom. And so I can work with anyone anywhere in the world, which oh, that's is a awesome. beautiful thing. And the energy work as well. Sometimes people ask, you know, do I have to be in person? I'm like, no, it, it works through Zoom as well. It works right. really well. So. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. And in, so you're also, you said you're also on the social network, so they could reach you on Facebook and mm -hmm. other, other social networks too? Yes. Yes. Facebook, Instagram are my big two platforms so yeah and on your website could they could contact you if they have a question about maybe today's session or if any questions related to this yes yes there's a there's a link there to contact me um so yes please feel free to reach out with any questions concerns anything like that and it seems like you do a lot more than gut health you really go all over the board you're you know you help with a lot of different issues I do. And what I tell people quite often is because sometimes I feel like people pigeonhole themselves. I say, you know, the diagnosis really doesn't matter. Right. Ultimately, it's your body is out of balance and we're just working on bringing it back into balance. So, yeah. yeah. So I have the ability and the capacity to work with people who are struggling with all sorts of things, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, or you're like, you know, I just energetically, I'm curious to explore this. I have a way to meet you. Oh, that's amazing. I love it. I love it. So tell everybody one more time what your website is, just so they know. Absolutely. It's www.drselvi.com. 
So it's drselvi.com. And if you have, before we go, if you have any tips or suggestions, what would you like to tell the audience? Maybe some things that could help them or some advice. I mean, the number one thing that I am passionate about people hearing is that no matter where you are right now, no matter what you might be struggling with, your body can repair itself. Mm -hmm. I feel like that just, it cannot be said enough. Yeah. Um, and that people struggle to to hear that and to understand that and to really receive that. Yeah. So I think that's number one. Yeah. Um, whether you're newly diagnosed, whether you know you you don't have a diagnosis, or whether you've been working on your health for years, there is something that can help you get to the next level if that's where you want to be. And it's just a matter of understanding your body's language and working with your body at the level of your body, that will start to unlock everything. I feel like that's so true because I think some people think, well, this is the way it is. It's in my DNA and you know, I'm going to remain like this for the rest of my life and they yeah. give up. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just not true. I mean, this concept of even epigenetics, just because you have a gene doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be turned on or expressed. Right. So whatever it is, does not have to be a life sentence at all. I mean, I was told that I was going to have Crohn's disease for the rest of my life, that I would have to be on medications for the rest of my life. Let me tell you, I feel the best I have ever felt in my entire life. I'm not on any medications and I don't even think about it. Like it's not even part of my life anymore. That's amazing. That is so amazing. And it shows you just by the, the miracle that happened to you and, and how you went about getting to this point in life. You know, if you could do it, anybody has the potential to do it. You know, absolutely. And absolutely. All they have to do is just reach out, you know, and, you know, and, and it, it, it's, you know, some people are afraid to reach out, but you know what? You can't get better unless you reach out and you, you ask for help because we're just not meant to solve everything on our own. You know, it's virtually impossible. So with the help of others like yourself, you know, people can go to a whole new extremity of life and, and really, you know, start to enjoy life and not have to suffer like from the pain of Crohn's and, and go through all the, all the complications and, and the obstacles that it gives. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I really, truly believe life is meant to be lived, right? Yes. And if you're honest with yourself, you know, when I first meet clients, they'll tell me, you know, I want to get better. I'm like, okay, but what else do you want? Like, what yeah. do you really, really want? If you're honest with yourself, you know, there's so much more than that. And right. it's absolutely possible to access that. But of course, yes, take the help. I mean, I know once I finally found a practitioner who was able to work with me to help me, to guide me. Yeah. That was it. Then I was just like, I was on a rocket ship, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like it's, you need really, the best thing about support is that you're getting an unbiased opinion from somebody that doesn't know you, that we sees things from a different perspective mm -hmm. and it can really be an eye opener for some people, you mm -hmm. know, and that's when the healing can begin is when somebody who doesn't know you, that's listening from, from the other side and, and is looking at it from a different perspective or has different knowledge in the area that shares it with you. It could just open up a whole new world for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Selvi, this has been amazing. And I hope to see you back on the show. I love everything that you talked about today. And I, I think, you know, you know, gut health and, and working on the mind, body and soul and how it all intertwines with each other is so important. People have to really realize how everything, you know, everything about you is all connected and how Absolutely. people really have to take a look at their, their life and their mind and their body and how they do things and their spiritual life and really, you know, analyze, you know, what can I do to make my life better, you know, than what it is. And cause we all could use some tweaks here and there. Nobody's perfect. So absolutely, you know, this has been awesome. Thank you so much. I, it's been a, such a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an absolute honor. Uh, yeah, I, I really appreciate you. Thank you for all the good work you do. And I, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you. You as well, Stacey.